Hey guys, and welcome back to Alone in the Dark. When we last left off, we managed to get kind of inside the man- the man- I want to say mansion all the freaking time, but of course, I mean the manor. Uh, we found the triple barrel shotgun, which actually sounds a lot better than it actually is, but hey, you know, more weapons are always good. We also have- Oh yeah, we picked up the key, didn't we? Um, now, I did play a few minutes of this uh, yesterday before uh, <laughs> started having some issues. Um, so I do know that that key is for this door here. Uh, I don't know if there's any other goodies dotted around. Let's have a quick look. Pretty sure I searched this area. We can't go up there because that's locked. I know that much, but uh, that's for Eileen uh, a little bit later on anyway. Um, that one we can look through the slit, nothing else. That was where we came in from. So, let's take the only door that we have actually available to us. Oh my god. We actually do have a pretty sexy amount of, uh, space. Uh, amount of space, amount of ammo, I should say. Not too bad. Can we phone Eileen, I wonder? Eileen? No, I guess not. Alright, oh. That's fine. Carnby? Oh. Carnby, Aline, okay. I thought you were dead. I did too. I'm not cut out for this kind of place. I want this to stop right now. I understand. You understand? You understand? You don't understand anything. I don't know what you, Johnson, or Professor Morton want of me, but I'm asking for this nightmare to stop right now. Aline, get a grip on yourself. Where are you? In some room, but I can't get to you. One of the doors is locked, and I can crack the other one, but there's some heavy object blocking it. When I think it's Obed Morton who locked me in here, and I wanted to help him. Don't move. I'll come free you. Is that the best you can do? Yes, that's the best I can do. Well, okay. <laughs> Hurry up. God, she's being pretty bloody demanding, isn't she? Wait, don't open that door. Okay. Ooh. Well, that's... Bloody awkward. Get the hell off me, dude. Jesus, how many rounds are you going to take? Ah, this handgun. Not that impressive, apparently. But I do want to, if we can, save our... Is that it? Save our um, shotgun for now. Because, uh, you know, I mean, it's not brilliant, but it definitely does have... A good bit more uh, damage output than this handgun. Um. Okay. So. Oh. Aline, any more news? I'm here waiting for you. What are you doing? I can't find the room in which you say you're locked up. It can't be that tough. I'm upstairs. There's a staircase in the lobby. Okay. I'll head over there. Thanks. Hurry up. Okay. Uh. <laughs> I didn't actually get that far when I was playing this uh, before, before I decided to scrap the video. Uh, so I actually know where we're going. Right, so originally I said, hey, remember there was that um, cupboard up there that we could move? Uh, which for some reason Edward in a minute is going to call that a chest of drawers. Not really sure how, but sure, okay. Um, yeah, and I actually was hoping there was going to be a cool item there, but that's actually uh, how we let Eileen out of the uh, room. Hey, I can hear you. Can you see what's blocking the door? I think it's just a chest of drawers. Well, then push it aside. Yeah, I kind of really don't like Eileen's personality. She's just, ugh. I'm not going to say she's Ashley Graham from Resident Evil 4, but she's really annoying. All right, can't be. Now, this is all new to me. At last. I want you to tell me what's going on. I don't know yet. But I do love your new outfit. It makes you look less, uh, you know. Yes, I know. <laughs> here, I got your stuff. Thanks. That's what? What about my jacket? Whoever locked you up in here probably thought it matched his hair. <laughs> Listen, I should never have agreed to let you come along. I have my own reasons for being here. Were you able to talk with Obed Morton? No, were you? I'm not so sure. 
I have this feeling that there's more than one Obed Morton. It's way too dangerous. We have to find a safe place for you where you can hide and wait for me. Listen, Carnby. You know as well as I do that the safest place is at least two hours away by plane. I haven't done too bad up till now, and I sure don't intend to spend whatever time I have left doing nothing. I want to know. Just before, I heard this voice above us. There's a trap door. If you help me, I can reach it. But why not stick together? You and I don't have the same goals. Remember what you told me in the plane. Come on, give me a hand. What if I were to say no? You're not the type to say no. <sighs> Oof. Well, okay. I mean, Eileen's off on her merry way. Eileen? So, well, she does that. Let's have a little look around, shall we? Uh, hopefully, we can find some gear or something. Uh, an Indian posing in front of an underground door, framed by two monumental statues. Yeah, we'll be seeing that a little bit later. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. Is this going to be the same? Yeah. So these are the same that, uh, as we read in the uh, other playthrough, which is fine. I mean, maybe we're going to find some unique things as well, but yeah, we've already seen that. So we can actually go through here. Interesting. Okay. And there's no monsters down here, at least not yet. Now, I know Eileen probably wants us to go uh, upstairs with her. But let's uh, continue our own investigation. Have a little look and see what we can find. Yes, we can't go through there. Oh, we can look through the spy hole. All right, well, I mean, oh, hello. I guess it kind of was worth coming down here then. Yeah, okay, so not really anything worth going down there for then. All right, well, let's go back upstairs. Are we going to get the two Gribblies chasing us? Eh, it doesn't look like it. Or did they spawn in around here? Ah, okay, we're not going to get them. That's fine. So, what's through this door? Door is sealed up. Okay, fine. So, back the way we came. And I'm okay with that because we have so many bloody options of where to go now. Uh, let's check out the ground floor first. That seems to be a thing. See, this, like, it's so obvious that this has been pushed or moved or something. Oh, we can! Okay. So we can only push it either there. Or back there. We Okay. Really? So what's the point? Uh, it doesn't actually seem to do anything. Because there's nothing down there. I mean... Oh, another save medallion. Truth be told... I thought that we'd be able to push it here somewhere. But... Uh, I guess not. Alright, well... We won't bother with that for now then. Right. Now, there was another door here somewhere, wasn't there? Uh, oh, okay. Well, you know, maybe that wasn't a door. Right, can we go through here? The door is locked, so maybe we can go through there, just not yet. Righty tighty. We can go through this one, though. Or, you know, maybe not, I guess. What about this one? Hey, we can go through this one. Ooh. Hello. you have come looking for I was expecting you just stay where you are don't move an inch who are you they call me Edenshaw I am the guardian of this island the guardian guardian of what 
And what are all these monsters? What the heck's going on here? Professor Morton has definitely crossed the threshold. Look, can't you spell it out? What is this mess? My weakness is to blame. I let children play with powers way beyond their grasp. But the legends were not wrong. You have come to us. My only hope is that it is not too late. This is all Greek to me. It will become clear soon enough. Go to the library. The books withhold many a secret. Also, take this charm. It will prevent you from falling into oblivion with all the others. Go, fulfill your destiny. Save us. Wait, wait. I didn't come here to fool around. I came to investigate Fisk's death. I do not know who you are talking about. Charles Fisk. 50-ish, about 6'1", graying hair. I still do not know who that is. You see, nobody's come to Shadow Island for months now. Okay, that's about enough of this. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, so Kambi's not buying what he's selling. So, he's given us another set. Hang on, how many of these things have we got? Five. Uh, okay. I mean, sure. I'd rather have, you know, too many than not enough. Uh, yeah, we're not actually looking at the disfigured statue. Thank you. Alright, I know we've got to go to the library, but... Oh! Jesus. Okay. Oh. Hey, this is a zombie room. Whoa. Just literally just got up. Wow. Okay. You'd be forgiven for thinking these things are not killable. Seriously? Alright, well stop wasting that then I guess. Just get the old cannon out. Right, you're done. So that blood patch on the floor there. Ooh. Now remember, we came in here as, oh nice, as Eileen, but I don't think we could actually do anything in here. So I wonder if there's something in here for Edward, the photograph. Uh, did we get that photo as Eileen or Elaine, I guess? Okay. Ooh. Oh, you little bastard. What the hell is that? Ooh. Ribley. A wolf mask. Okay. I guess that's some kind of puzzle that we're going to have coming up. Got ya. Oh, bastard. The weird baby crab head things. I'm trying to give you the willies. Okay. Just, oh, right, okay. Some kind of balance. So... We need to balance it out. We can't use that here. Let's have a look at this thing. Uh, a wooden wolf's head mask. Alright. So... We need to find a weight. Oh, Jesus. We need to find a weight or something, I guess. Which may or may not be um, at the library. Oh, piss off. Ah, there wasn't anything up this way, was there? Oh, I mean, there's a health pack. First aid kit, cool. I guess there wasn't actually anything here for Eileen, but, uh... Oh, nice. Whilst you're, like, jibbing out, we can give you the old slip. So, we know we need to go to the HM room. For a weight... Oh! A weight or something. What's this? More shells. Bloody hell. Giving them out, like, sweets or something. 
actually. Right, let's reload that bad boy. But then, saying that, uh, when we was playing with uh, Eileen, we actually got quite a lot of ammo for her at points. Right, that's going to lead... Oh, that leads upstairs, doesn't it? Memory serves. I wonder if there's anything worth plundering up here. Nothing lighting up. They definitely seem to be getting a lot more ammo and such. So we've got a light. We can turn the light on. That's fine. Yes. Yes. Lighting up these rooms is always a good thing. Can we have that light on, please? Oh. Ooh. There's a bloody grenade launcher already. Uh, okay. Cool. I suppose. Any other goodies? Because I like goodies. So there's that ambient. Uh, oh, hello. In the attic. I went through there. I saw that there's some sort of trap door on the floor. You'll see it. When you walk on it, it has a hollow sound. I met Edenshaw, the old Indian. He told me he was the last witch doctor. He says he can do something that will stop all this madness. Do you think we can trust him? I met him too. He seemed to know a lot more than he said. But I don't think we have much of a choice, anyhow. He needs seven statues to carry out some sort of ritual. Well, why doesn't he go looking for them? <laughs> Can we help him? Sure. What do these statues look like? I don't really know. They depict some kind of animals, I think. Oh, well, that narrows it down. <laughs> Carnby, I'm sure it's really important. I know, I know. We'll find his statues for him. But after that, we're going home. And where is your home? I don't know yet. We'll get to that later. Over. All right. She's already asking questions about taking him home. Ooh la la. Okay, so door is locked. Right. So I'm guessing we whatever we need before we come up here, we need to go to the library, which makes sense. I know the game wants us to go to the library, but I'm just having fun exploring. So. All right. So we're going to go find Eden Shaw's statues for him, which is, yeah, makes sense. I mean, at the end of the day, that's the only lead we have. Although, interesting, uh, he's, you know, lived on this island basically, you know, his whole life. And he didn't hear of anybody called Fisk. Well, that's curious. To be expected, but curious nonetheless. Um... We haven't, yeah, we went into that room. We haven't tried this one yet, have we? Oh yeah, that was a zombie room. Yeah, with the HR room, yeah, or HM room, whatever it was. Right, that leads, oh God, hello. Oi, you dirty little fucker. Oh God, there are lots of zombies in here. All right, oh jeez. Lots and lots of zombies. Whoa, right, time to get the, the shotgun out, I think. Really? You didn't just fire your gun? God, I can't believe they take a whole three round stack of shells. Ooh, they're greedy, greedy sons of bitches. Right, okay, well, okay, I mean, oh, of course, the door is locked. Why wouldn't the door be locked? Hey, we found a door that's not locked. That's cool. Right, let's turn the lights on. Ooh. Uh, an amphora filled with water. Right. A crowbar. Guessing we need the crowbar to... Wrench open whatever the hell Eileen was talking about. That makes sense. Some papers here to read. Ooh. Cheddar Island. I, the undersigned Richard Morton, being of sound mind and body, declare this document to be my last will and testament. Let no other take its place. Archibald, my son, 
the mission I undertook many long years ago is still vast and incomplete. I expect you and your descendants to strive without respite for its completion. To this end, I bequeath you my goods and uh, chattels, my estate and all it contains. Let Deserto guide you. He will tell you what to do and how to do it. Archibald. I have often seen doubt cloud your youthful eye. Sometimes your glance betrays your disapproval. Indeed, I have sacrificed human life. But name me the con uh, but name me the conquest without sacrifice. Indeed, I have defiled almost every commandment in the Bible. But that but isn't morality always the first casualty of progress? What worth do a few miserable lives have compared to the immense discoveries of the enormous, unprecedented advances that I have made? Archbold, I know you are no coward, and I know that with Deserto's help, you will go far, much further than I ever did. You will be the one to venture into the unknown. You will set the foundations for a new humanity. I know that because of us. The Morton name will shine with the light of a thousand stars in the great fan, uh, pantheon of history. My detractors will become the laughing stock of generations to come. Thanks to you and the confidence I have in Deserto, our destiny shall be fulfilled. Thus, I do leave this world in peace. My library is my life's work. I wanted it to be a hexagon, the perfect form of six equilateral triangles representing the universe. It is a repository for the ten centuries of human knowledge. Worthless, every word of it. Ten centuries of empty, hollow treaties. Ten black centuries of ignorance. Vain and stupid reflections that remind us each day how vile and petty the human spirit is. Ten centuries, and not one mention of the world of darkness. I understand now that humanity has let its desire go by. However... Four works are worth saving. Four works contain the true key. I have discovered a symbol that represents the worlds of darkness and light. Two entities in equilibrium, one above the other. The one does not exist without the other. Two triangles uh, juxtaposed in, opposite, in opposition. The one clear, the other dark. I place the four books vertically in the space in the library representing the symbol the symbol thus crosses the library from one side to the other the first is placed at the highest the second is opposite light darkness darkness light okay so we need that to sort out the library puzzle I'm guessing there's a library puzzle uh, that makes sense anyway guys uh, one second And we're back, guys. Right, so we've got a bit of a puzzle to do in the library, which, uh, ooh, makes sense. We've got the flask. Do we, oh, well, that looks like a statue. No, that's that. Okay, thought that was literally gonna be a statue then for a minute. <clears throat> I guess not. That's the contract, the deed. Uh, okay, so can we fill this flask up with like water from here? Uh, yeah. So, like, okay, filled the flask. Right. Uh, cylindrical flask and a canvas cover. Flask is already full. Well, yeah, jackass, I know that. But... Okay, so it's not a health item. Good to know, I guess. Oh, shit on a shovel. Uh, yeah, thanks. It's like spawning in all fucking demonic like. Ah, uh, can we? Ah, there is a light in here. Turn the light on, will that kill them? No. Yes? No? Yes? No? I mean, they're not here, so... 
Hey, first aid kit. And an empty cupboard, which is fine. Uh, significantly less hostile than when we played as Elaine. Uh, so, a painting of a megalithic site with stone, stone cylinder. Okay, cool story, man. Cool story. That's the science with Professor Morton. Professor Morton's representation immediately triggered passionate outbursts from the specialist present in the audience for several years. Uh, we've read this, haven't we? Uh, yeah, yeah, we read that one. A highly complex writing system. Yeah, yeah, Chief, we got it. You unlock the door. Wonderful. I like unlocking doors. Oh. Okay, then. That just leads us straight back into the main hall, which is fine, but... Hoping for... Another room to exp... Ooh. Explore. Ah. Uh, of Kansas American Indians, a link between. This book is the result of research that I embarked upon more than 20 years ago. I'm aware that the theories, ideas, and truths uh, expounded herein have already um, uh, engaged great hostility, not only from my colleagues, but also from anthro. anthro Anthropological and enth uh, dyslexia is really just cock blocking me to those words right now. You know, it's so funny because I, if I come back in five minutes, I'll be able to read them like that. Oh, damn it. Anyway, so yeah, so scientists from these uh, disciplines, should we say, who are more uh, distantly related to my field. I know that history will prove me right. It is this conviction that drives me onwards on this narrow, treacherous path that I have chosen to take. My passion for Abkhazian culture, language, and civilization started at a very young age. I owe this passion to two men. Firstly, my grandfather, Jeremy Morton, who was a physician, mathematician, mathematician astronomer, philosopher, and magician. Jesus Christ. Well, he had a rap sheet as well as a misunderstood genius. By the will of God, may mankind one day pay him the homage that is that is his due. Secondly, Joseph Edenshaw, who entered my grandfather's service in 1920... Yeah, hang on, we have read this, haven't we? Yeah, pretty sure we read this. Judo Christians, extraterrestrials. No, actually, I don't think we have read this. Okay, this looks different. <coughs> okay, so. <coughs> <coughs> I am deeply grateful to them both. Okay. May the God bathe them both with his sweet eternal light. My detractors have often uh, prepoached me for elaborating the theories from which my convictions sprang on the basis of limited, fragmentary, and unreliable sources. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Uh, if it is, uh, it is true to say that up until now, the material that I have provided... To feed my critics' curiosity is scant. Three engraved stones and several do dozen photos of inscriptions taken from the walls of grottos found in an island off the coast of Boston. Uh, Champollion, wherever persuaded the world of his convictions with only the Rosetta Stone on the basis of my evidence, I can confirm that the highly evolved form of... Uh, Abkhazian civilization with a complex writing system appeared in the northeast of what is now the United States 1500 years ago. This civilization has a rich history that is more intensive than even our Judo Christian civilization. Unlike other human civilizations, it never sought to extend its territories, to conquer others or migrate. 
It should not be forgotten that, in this respect, that the word Abkansas itself means guardian in their language. <clears throat> Since my first publications on the subject appeared in certain specialist reviews of limited circulation, articles have appeared which claim the Abkansas are the descendants of a race of extraterrestrial origin. Hmm. This uh, discredited my research greatly, and I feel compelled to say that such rantings are completely unfounded. Uh, the Abkansas are anything but extraterrestrials. Uh, Abkansas society was not organized around the family unit, but on a community structure. From the age of 12, Abkansas men and women both embark without sexual discrimination on the same initiation uh, rituals which last 12 long years. At the end of their initiation, they are accorded the status of guardian. It is at this point <clears throat> that different religious or different religious military and household functions are attributed. The Abkhanis were cave dwellers. However, their religion was not based on fire but light. They developed an elaborate pantheon of divinities, which became their cornerstones of their daily life. <clears throat> the magic of light. Ancient uh, Abkhanis religion worship was expressed through a set of different magical rituals which light was central. <clears throat> it also appears that their designated enemies were forms of demons from hell that they called uh, Darkatar, Annie, or creatures of darkness. It is probable that this marvellous um, uh, Abkhansis writing system, the deciphering of which I am still gripping or grappling with today, was perfected to determine specific roles for each ritual. Many questions remain unanswered, in particular how their writing operated. For most known <coughs> civilizations, writing was first invented for commercial exchange, for listing possessions, or for establishing contact or contracts. The Abkhanis, one single uh, re uh, Preoccupation, however, seems to have been their role as guardian. Guardian of what, though? And against whom? These are both questions to which I think I will never find a satisfactory answer. Oh, God. Right, dyslexia always strikes at the worst time. It's such a strange thing, you know. You can, you can literally see the word, but you can't see it, if that makes sense. <clears throat> it's... Ugh. It's frustrating. And it's never really got any better. Uh, so that leads back. We can actually go this way. Which I'm not sure if I ever knew about this. In my playthrough. Uh, previously. Oh yeah, forgot. We've got zombies everywhere, haven't we? Really? Why is there a delay between when you push the fire button? Yeah, almost a second of delay there. That's frustrating, to say the least. Okay, so what about this room? The door is locked. <clears throat> and we got more zombies this way. You know what? I don't like these zombies. The shotgun doesn't seem to have any kind of like fall off either on its range. Which is really nice. Right, he's done. There's more. There's always more. Somewhere. Oh, there he is. Yeah, I mean, as zombies, these things are kind of pretty naff, actually. How many shells have we got? We're, like, eating through them. 51. Well, we do want this place to be somewhat clear. There we go. Combat music has gone. Okay, right. I think it's about time we wrap this video up. <clears throat> so, we've come from down here. We've still got some rooms to explore. Going through here, I think, will lead us back to the library. Not here. Here. 
Uh, well, may, I mean, maybe it actually should, but I think it's it's locked, which is a little bit awkward. So, uh, we've explored everywhere here, then. So I guess we can go up here. Onto the actual second floor. Of course, this is going to take us out in a somewhat different... No, nope. forget that, then. Forget that. Okay. Uh, uh, right, well, I guess we're going to go back to the main hall then, and then up, which is through here. So guys, when we return, we're going to go upstairs, and we're going to keep making progress towards the library. So, thank you very much for watching, and as always, until next time.